Good morning. morning. Welcome once again to Trinity Lutheran Church uh, online uh, as we continue posting our services uh, to YouTube uh, at this time when we are unable to to be together in person. Uh, My thanks uh, once again to the uh, less than 10 person choir who is here to help uh, help put some good singing uh, on the recording for the benefit of all of us who uh, who are watching. Um, Today is uh, Palm Sunday, uh, and so uh, the order of service will be a little different uh, from what you're used to uh, on Palm Sunday. There won't be a procession from the back. Uh, None of it would get on camera, so there's really no point. Um, We don't have confirmation uh, today. Uh, Obviously, all of the uh, extended families and large gatherings that we usually have on this day uh, we're not able to have, uh, so we will uh, certainly be hopeful for that to occur some point Uh, later in the future, Uh, but we are still here uh, to worship, to hear the word of God, uh, to pray uh, for mercy for ourselves uh, and others, and to remember uh, our Lord's entry into Jerusalem. Order service today, the order of Matins, uh, which begins on page 219, our first hymn, number 442.
Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be. The Lord has redeemed his people. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Lift up your heads, O gates. Be lifted up, O ancient doors. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Be lifted up, O ancient doors. That the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord.
The Old Testament reading for Palm Sunday is written in the 50th chapter of the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with the word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? O Lord, have mercy on us. The epistle reading, letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, the second chapter. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. O Lord, have mercy on us. Reading from the Gospel of John, the 12th chapter. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went out to meet him was that they had heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. O Lord, have mercy on us. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is put away. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins.
In the name of Jesus, amen. They took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna. The word itself comes to us from the Hebrew language. It actually goes back to the Old Testament. Psalm 118. Hoshiana Adonai. Save us, O Lord. And it's interesting that this particular word is used for Jesus because the actual meaning of the word doesn't necessarily exactly line up with the context here. When we see what is going on, that Jesus is entering into the city of Jerusalem and that the crowds are singing his praise, that they are welcoming him as the king of Israel, that they are rejoicing in the word that he proclaims and the works that he has done, the miracles that he has performed. It's so easy for us to look at this and say, this must be a word of praise. And in the context, it is. But again, the literal translation is, save us. It's a call for help, a plea for mercy, much more than simply an acclamation of praise. But of course we know that this is appropriate to our Lord also, that the reason that he comes into Jerusalem is to go to the cross, to suffer death, for the purpose of atoning for the sins of the world, taking away the sins of the world and thus bringing salvation to his people, delivering his people from sin, from death, from all the powers of the devil. Jesus does come for, you could say, both of these purposes, to be the true king to come into his kingdom and claim his kingdom for his own and also to save his people, to have mercy and to have compassion upon his people and provide life and salvation to his people who cry out for mercy. And again, going back, perhaps even a thousand years before Jesus, this is how these two things uh, kind of get linked together. That for most people, their king was their protector. Their king was their source of life. When the enemies were invading, the people cried out to the king, to protect them. When the people were hungry, they cried out to the king to feed them. When the people were oppressed and mistreated, they cried out to the king for justice. And so for these, and and, and really all of these reasons kind of fitting together, This word, Hosanna, which literally means save us, ends up being directed so often towards kings, towards earthly governments in general, we would say. And you know, isn't this what we're seeing today? Isn't this what we're seeing on the news? There are needs that we have today desperate needs, not from foreign invaders necessarily, but 
We have, need, we have a need of safety. We have a need of protection. We have a need for health and, the, and, and health care. We have a need for food. We have a need for the basic necessities of life to, uh, to remain accessible to us in this time of crisis. For many of us, increasingly, we have need of a job. We have need of a paycheck in order to pay the bills and provide for those things that we need. And so it's kind of human nature. Where do we look? We look to the government. Not a king, but a president, or a governor, or both. And we cry out, save us. Do something to help us. Provide for us what we need. Protect us. And there's a certain helplessness to it almost. We can't do it ourselves. If we try to do it ourselves, we're failing. So we need someone to to come in very authoritatively and say, this is what you can do and this is what you cannot do. And in some ways, we're comforted by this. Thousands of years of history, things haven't changed all that much. The kings of the earth have always been seen sort of in this way. And so many people see Jesus this way also. After all, this is a part of the reason that, uh, that the crowds follow Jesus. And sometimes it's not good. Um, There's an incident, if you read back a a few chapters earlier in John, Jesus actually rebukes the crowd. After Jesus feeds 5,000 people in the wilderness with a few loaves of bread and a few fish. You remember that one? A lot of the crowd that follows Jesus end up following him for the wrong reason. They had a free meal and they want another one. They're not interested in Jesus' teaching. They're not interested in who he really is or what he has to say. All they've seen is, hey, this guy's handing out free food. Let's follow him and maybe we'll get some more. And Jesus has to rebuke them and he tells them, I am the bread of life. Which so many of them don't understand. Do we pray to the Lord for help? Do we pray to the Lord for mercy? Do we cry out to the Lord, save us, as enthusiastically as we look to the government to provide for our needs and take away our fears in this time of trouble. For the reality is that Jesus does all of this and more. It is Jesus who provides daily bread, not only to his faithful people, but also to the wicked. It is Jesus who creates and sustains life upon this earth, who gives health to his people, who is able to heal from every disease. It is Jesus who causes the sun to shine and the rain to fall that the fruits of the earth grow in abundance and provide food for all the world. It is Jesus who gives our lives meaning and purpose by his word and his law, his commandments to love God and to love one another. When we pray, when we cry out, Hosanna, save us, it is all of this, and it is more. 
For we know that no matter what happens in this world, whether we are healthy or sick, whether we are rich or poor, whether we have an abundance of everything that we need in this world or whether we are in desperate need and lack, we know that all are sinners, that all of our lives end eventually in suffering and death. And again, we cry out to the Lord, save us, knowing that the death of Jesus, the reason that he comes in to Jerusalem to give his life is to forgive our sins, to take away our sinfulness and the consequences of our sins, to give to us new life, eternal life, everlasting life to rescue us, not just, of the ev- not just from the evils of this world, but to rescue us from the devil, to rescue us from all the powers of darkness, everything that assaults the soul, everything that troubles our mind and our spirit, as well as the things that trouble the body. Jesus is able to heal these as well. Jesus comes to give life, body and soul, here in time and there in eternity. And so for all these things also we cry out, Hoshiana Adonai, Hosanna, Lord, save us. Knowing that Jesus has come to us, the King of Israel, for this very purpose, to rescue us from every evil of body and soul, to forgive our sins, to give to us life abundant in this world, and also the life of the world to come, which no suffering in this world is able to take from us. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gracious Lord, keep your scattered church in your mercy, that she may endure the assaults of the evil one and remain faithful for the sake of those numbered within your kingdom and those who have not yet heard the gospel and been brought to faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, by your Spirit, you have gathered us as your church. You have promised that wherever two or three are together in your name, there you are in our midst. Do not allow disaster or stress to distract us from the good vocations into which you have called us to serve in church, in home, and in community. Grant unto us every needful gift and blessing that we may honor our callings and serve you to the best of our ability. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, have mercy upon all those who serve your people in time of crisis. We commend to your special protection all those who provide medical care and service to your people. Grant them strength of body and soundness of mind to use the gifts that you have given them to bring healing and comfort to those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty Lord, you have established all authority on earth and you hold accountable all those who govern here and in every place. Guide our President, Congress, the Governor of this state, and all those who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they would serve nobly and wisely, pursuing the path of justice, protecting the citizens entrusted to them. Give them the wisdom and strength needed to bring our world out of crisis and back to stability. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, your grace is sufficient for all our needs. You have promised to be the strength of the weary, the hope of the fearful, the healing of the sick, the fullness of the disabled, and the peace of all those who are distressed. Hear us on behalf of our people and the world suffering disease and isolation. We pray especially for Lee, Elda, Gus, Geneva, Alberta, Mabel, Ruby, Bernice, Emma, Gloria, Ruthann, Leona, Irwin and Lois, Marvin and Dorothy, Don, Rod, Ed, and Gerald, and all whom we hold dear in our hearts, that they may be well supplied by your grace in every time of trouble. Lord, in your mercy. Everlasting Father, it is your will that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth by faith. Give to your word success. Deliver from error all those who live in darkness and fear, that they may walk in the light of the Lord Jesus and have confidence for the trials of this world and the hope for the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord, you give food to the hungry. You provide for all our needs in this mortal life. Grant to us a grateful heart, knowledge to use wisely and well all that you have entrusted to our care. Bless those who work to make, prepare, deliver, or serve our daily bread. Give relief to those whose work 
has been halted. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and most merciful God, you bring us through suffering and death with our Lord Jesus Christ to enter with him into glory. We pray for the family of Arthur Everding, who has been called to rest. Grant us grace at all times to acknowledge and accept your holy and gracious will, to remain in the true faith, and to find peace and joy in the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Thank you once again for being with us this morning. Uh, just a few words about the upcoming schedule, uh, and I certainly invite those of you who are watching on the video to, uh, to bookmark our channel or go ahead and subscribe to it. Um, we will be trying to follow the regular Holy Week schedule as best as possible. Uh, so we will be posting uh, service videos uh, for Monday, Thursday, uh, sometime on Thursday, Good Friday, uh, uh, sometime on Friday, and also uh, in time for Easter Sunday uh, next week. So be sure to watch uh, for that. Uh, again, my thanks to the, uh, the less than 10 choir that has gathered once again to provide the singing for us uh, today. Uh, we pray God's blessing uh, and protection uh, upon all of you uh, wherever you are. Have a good week. <laughs>